I personally am like taking like a personal challenge to make this thing as nice as I possibly can for him. But he's like, I've outlived my expiration date and he purchased this boat just to be able to, for him and his wife to basically be able to have as much memories and much time on it as possible before he passes away. So the name on the back has meaning. They all have like tattoos of it and stuff. Um, this boat actually has a lot of sentimental value to them. And I've been sending him video, like updating him. And he's like, man, that looks incredible. Thank you so much. At this point, the entire structure is sanded besides the very front brow. We'll get you up there. We're, we're only doing a 1000 grit dry sand. So we're just gonna do a nice 1000 grit. Uh, the reason why I'm not going lower, we did do 800 and 1000 on the hull, but the reason why we're doing it on the top side is the top side was so dry. So in, in, in order to prevent us basically ripping the rest of the gel coat off, we just did a nice thousand just to kind of even out yeah. the oxidation and we're buffing it. And it's actually coming out really nice. Well, let me ask you this. What's the, give me the ins and outs on what's the difference between wet sand and dry sand? When you're wet sanding and it's super oxidized, it's gonna bleed off a lot of that dead gel coat and that dead gel coat actually gets caked onto the sanding disc and you're not actually, you'll burn through a lot of paper basically because you're removing so much. And if you're using a lot of water, you're basically causing your sander to hydroplane and it's not actually cutting into it. So when you have it dry, there's no hydroplaning, it's just gonna be straight gangster grit on there and so cutting it away. when do you know to dry sand and wet sand? Yeah, well, honestly, man, the last couple of boats, I've just been dry sanding and just been enjoying that's it. So I'm almost kind of fading, fading away from wet, wet sanding. sanding. Yeah. And that's what I was thinking too, because I feel like you can just work better with cuts yeah. more. You don't go through as many dips. Can you and burn up through gel coat faster? Yes, 100%. <laughs> you're doing a lot you're more eating a lot more. Yeah, yeah you're but eating a lot more. that also probably would save you steps on yeah. 800, 1,000, 2,000 when you can probably just hit it with a thousand or something you know, yeah and it does more cut. well and that's the thing so with wet sanding it's safer so one of the reasons why i've always taught wet sanding is because somebody in freaking ohio that goes to try to sand their boat they dry sand it and blow through it yeah, you know what yeah, i mean it causes damage but unfortunately know. it's like when you're trying to run a company you got to do stuff yeah. professional we're professional yeah. so we have to do professional yeah, stuff so use caution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. About a month ago, I had a painter, I called him. He owns a yacht works company, Kilker in Orange Beach, Kilker Yacht Works. And I told him wet sand, dry sand. And he said that he actually contacted a, um, a custom car shop painter. It was a friend of his. And he told him that that theory of if you use too much water when you're wet sanding, which I've always drenched it with wet sanding. Yeah. That's how I was taught is that it basically causes your sanding pad to hydroplane across the surface. So it's not actually digging into the surface. So that's why you're like, man, my disc isn't working. It's not so much the disc, it's just that it's hydroplaning across it. So when you're dry sanding, yeah, for sure. When we were doing that sailboat, we were wet sanding it, but the pad kept getting like stuck. And yeah. you have to like stop it, pull like it off. Well, yeah. so what's happening is all that dead gel coat is getting basically trapped onto the yeah. pad. And that's gonna happen when you're dry sanding. So what you'll wanna do is take like a microfiber towel or even your pant leg. And as you're, as you're sanding, you'll see the dead gel coat kind of flying away, like smoking. When that stops, it's usually your pads clogged. Just go ahead and knock off the, the chalk on your disc and it's brand new again. Just keep rolling. Yeah. yeah. I actually have a tool I use for that too. Yeah. Well, it kind of stands over you use. Um, we we started. I started using. No, dude. I I go to. There's a, a automotive paint supply here, yeah. and it's Sunmite, and I've been I've been loving Is it, it, dude. Green? Yeah, no, yeah. That's yeah. What I use. I, yeah. I was, it's like I 80 sent, cents a sheet or yeah, something like that. Yeah, I sailed towards Merkin whenever I first started out, but it yeah. just didn't do what I wanted it to do. It's yeah. just not as intense, you know. Yeah. I, and I went to that for half the price, and hell, dude, we. It's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. How how strong are you, Easton, on rotary on running the rotary? Are you? Pretty solid on it. All right, cool. We will. This is my bag. Do you know how to set up the the rope and all that good stuff? Yeah. All right, sweet. Just Are you sure? Why do you laugh? Yeah. <laughs> because we had trouble with it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, one, bro, if you don't know how to. I, and I didn't have two, oh, I was just... so like I couldn't really lower myself because it it was either all the way go or no go. Right? So like. Most people get tied up on the knots. I had someone teach me one time, if you don't know how to tie a knot, just tie a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. So <laughs> you can't tie a knot, just make a whole bunch of them. Um, anyway, I have another, you, honestly, just one rope should be good. And I think you're gonna have to tie off on the wing that's back there. It might be kind of tricky to find a place to tie off at. All right, so let's just, bins where, bins we're already kind of on this side. Let's just go ahead and run on this side. I'll do, um, 
Yeah, hole, hole in this gunnel up here is done. So all of this is done. We're mainly on the, on the top structure. So we can basically go two routes. Either one guy could start with heavy cut and the other guy follow behind with yellow, or we could just put one guy on one side and one guy on the other side. Yeah, what what would, would y'all rather do? Just one and one? Probably okay, that way you're not waiting? Sweet. Yeah. So I'll let you guys decide. Whoever wants to do heavy cut on this side, go ahead and get set up. And then whoever wants to do heavy, heavy cut on the other side, just in case we're not able to finish it, because he needs this, he's splashing it next Tuesday. So in, in case we were not able to do the whole job, we wanted to get the bottom half done so that it's done. That way we don't have to do it in the water. So I'm kind of just finishing that trend. So let's go ahead and finish the windows. So basically the lower structure from the top of the windows down this way. And the way we, the easiest way to do that is we found if you just go ahead and raise the scaffolding all the way up, you can stand on the scaffolding. That way you're not bent over all crazy and just do it all the way. Yeah, do it all the way towards the front. So if you want to go ahead and get this lifted up, I can help you. And then we'll start on both sides. You want to start down here? Yeah, so this interface pad, this um, is a pretty big must when you're sanding. Yeah. Um, it'll help um, cushion the sand. And like, you see how the boat starts to kind of contour over yeah. here? So, if, you, if you don't have an interface pad, it won't actually flex with the contour. Right. So if it's hard, you're gonna get like a real big dig right. on this yeah, corner. Yeah. So this will help. Where do I need to pick one of these up? Um, um, either online, Amazon, or um, if, a paint supply. Interface? Yeah, paint supply store. Yeah, just look up interface pad. And I typically run, run into that, like about three, 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 between three and three and a half. So go ahead and just do the whole, if you feel it, it feels really textury. Yeah. Look at that oxidation. <laughs> That's beautiful. Once you're done sanding, it should feel like real nice and smooth. That's basically all we're doing is smoothing out that texture. You're coming down here. Yep. This right here is paint, all right? If it was plastic, well, you wouldn't want to hit it, yep. but it's super faded paint. So yeah, just go right over it. Be careful though on the edge. You can see the edge right here and it starts to wear down the paint. So we want to minimize that as much as possible. But in my opinion, on an older boat, if we have a little bit of like, you know, missing paint, but the whole thing is nice and glossy, I feel like that's a win Absolutely. versus having it look all dull and oxidized and not hit. So Absolutely. that's kind of how I call the shot on that. So just try to minimize that as much as possible on that on that corner, but there's not much you could do. Okay. Um, go, make, just make sure you go ahead and wipe all that before you start yeah. buffing. As far and, as speed, what are you gonna do? Yeah, so here, let me, can I see your rag? <laughs> so when we're here, This is heavy cut, right? Yeah. Let me see. The Makita is a little different than my other machine, so I gotta see. I wanna see I was around 1700. We're having to really cook that in, so. Yeah, about like this, so what, what do we add? It's uh, three and a half is about 1700, yeah. <laughs> That's good, good guess. But yeah, so when you're cooking, just really put a lot of pressure and see about how slow I'm moving. That's about how slow your consistency is gonna need to be. And the reasoning is, is just, it, it still has pretty open pores in this gel coat, um, just from how old it is. So when we speed it up and we're really letting it like polish out and really cut in there, it's gonna really brighten up that surface the best we can because unfortunately we weren't able to really remove all the, uh, the texturing. So um, go ahead, get you know a good section done, wipe it down and you wanna check for sanding scratches and make sure they're gone. I'll get you a little headlamp so you can just kind of periodically check. But before you do the whole side, just make sure your speed and your pressure is good enough to remove the sand scratches, right? Yep.
every single day I feel the pleasure Double up the work, let's make it extra Working so my mother get a rest, yo Working like I never know I'm blessed, yo Every single day I feel the pressure Diamonds in my eyes, I know I'm special In the gym, I gotta get my reps up In the gym, I gotta get my work in I can leave it out of chance, let's make it certain All right, so we got all the guys set up. We got Jackson right here with the white wool and the heavy cut. We got Cameron on the front doing the front brow. He's basically gonna spend the day up there on the brow, getting the brow done. We got Easton, um, their other guy, on the starboard side with the heavy cut. And now I'm gonna start following uh, Jackson with the yellow wool and the chop top. This is gonna be our medium cut step. So. We're getting a lot done, we got a lot of guys happening. One of the best ways to go about this is to have one guy do the white wool and then the other guy follow behind him with the yellow wool. And we're gonna do that on both sides. So once Jackson's done going all the way to the front of the bow, he's then gonna come up top here, start white wool on this, and I'm just gonna follow him and we're gonna bang this side out. And hopefully by that time, Ethan or um, Easton will be done on the starboard side and we'll follow up with the chop top. So got a lot happening, a lot of moving parts. Let's get it. Ugh, should probably plug my machine in, that helped. <laughs> now let's get it. Got, you just want to make sure you get all the sanding scratches because once we, uh, want, like even if you wax it, it'll look really good in about a month or two on that sand, when, when the oils from the compound start to go and then the waxing go, it'll look like oxidation, but really it's just those sanding scratches coming through because it's still scuffed. I can probably, I guess, Here, will you just hold that right there for me? You think if you Hand me the it? chop top. Well, I'm looking at the what's underneath it. I mean, the deep. I have eyes for it. You may not even be able to see it. Here, lift up, please. Let's see. Check that. So yeah, you're good. See how beautiful that looks? Yeah, that's money. Yeah. <laughs> that's what's making it look good. No, yeah, you see that dude? That looks incredible. So yeah, I think that's good, man. It's just freaking scratch the hell and back. So on this chop top step, just re let it run and yeah. just freaking like put a good amount of pressure on there. Are we really what we're, I'm finding on this boat is like letting it heat up. It really needs that heat to just come alive. But yeah, dude, I mean 
That looks freaking awesome. So, yeah, looks like you did a really good job. I say it's always best to, to cut more than not enough when it comes to buffing, because if you cut too much, you can always yeah. cut a little extra yeah. on your second step, you know what I mean? But then if you don't cut enough, then you got more steps you gotta add. Or That's it, too. yeah, or go back and redo it, you know? Yeah, for sure. Amen. Yeah, I mainly want to get all the superstructure done. And then hopefully, maybe Monday, I'll just come and wash it and wax it. You know, wax the superstructure, the hull, get it all done. The boat's going in the water on Wednesday or Thursday, so I'll have a little bit of time next week to finish up. But, uh, but yeah. Bottom job looks pretty fresh. Yeah, well, he just put a coat on there, and I told him, I just told him to stop because we had to acid wash this. And because yeah, yeah. he had, a, I mean, there, the non skid had rust all in it. Oh, yeah. So, and you could tell it just destroyed the, the bottom paint. So, I typically, just a little tip is if anyone's pulling it out, and most people, especially in winter seasons and shipyard, when they pull it out, they're usually going to do the bottom job. Yeah. Always have them do the bottom job after, after you're done. Yeah, yeah. Or have them sand it because sometimes they do have to sand it sand the bottom let me do my job detail it completely and at the very end just put a fresh coat of paint on there how many run this past you acid wash like you spray acid on the whole boat or just no spray? it's just mainly the the Not like skid, yeah non-skid wherever the rust marks were yeah yeah this thing was i mean dude this thing was jacked when we got it it looked like it had been sitting for probably 15 years yeah like not a lick of shine on it will it hurt it if you put acid on a gel coat um, well, it depends on how strong you make it, but no. Man, I tried it, and it was on that carver one, too, and it was like it kept leaving the residue behind it. Like yeah. It couldn't get rid acid of it. Acid washing it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, a lot of old school detailers would be like, just acid wash it, hit it with a compound, and yeah, wax it. You know what exactly I mean? That's exactly what he does. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly oh, what he did does. he tell you what to do that? Yeah, well, yeah. that's what he does, and, and so I figured, well. you know, yeah. Yeah. And no, so, yeah, for sure. Most of your old old school shipyard guys would be like, acid wash it, compound it, wax it, call that's it a day. It, I, that's exactly that's what it. Does. Yeah, that's, that's the guy that taught me how to detail, taught me how to do it, and yeah. I didn't. It took me a couple of years to. Well, yeah. it took me about a year because once I got my own business, and I had a couple of customers go, hey, I think my boat's not looking good anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we were bleaching everything, dude. Like. Yeah. The guy that taught me how to detail, literally every boat got washed with bleach, no matter yeah. what. Like maintain wash, Man, what, maintenance washes, everything. Yeah, what kills me is some, a lot of these marinas that say, you know, yeah, when we pull them out of water, we give it a wash down. This and yeah. That. Hell, they're using bleach mm -hmm. and dye. Oh, it is. And then it's a Dude, we coated a boat uh, literally like last week. Uh, brand, I mean, we, we, we polished out these brand new, beautiful black mercuries, yeah. and uh, the, the, I let the customer take it over the weekend because we finished the hull and we we're going to start the top side the next week. Yeah. He comes back that morning. The guys are, um, they weren't washing back. They looked sketchy. And I was like, what y'all doing, guys? They're like, oh, we're getting the scum line off. And I saw in the bucket next to them just a nasty old, like, brush with just dirty old water in there. And all through the brand new big mercuries, dude, just big brush mark scratches oh, yeah. all through it. Yeah, they just went to town scrubbing that thing with that brush. I'm like, gosh. The yeah, yeah, the, the, um, the owner was just like, dude, tell them not to do that. And I was like, well, I didn't want to be like that guy. But yeah. he was like, I'm going to be that guy because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just paid a whole bunch of money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's crazy, man. Brain sponsor me. <laughs> uh, where you? <laughs> yeah, we're Red Bull. Where are you guys at up here? Y'all said all the. Okay. Yeah, if y'all want to just keep rolling with that, that way we can just get the heavy cut completed. So if y'all want to, are you done on your side, right? Okay. Yeah. If y'all want to just um, on on your side, the starboard side. Um, I already started the heavy cut. 
So I don't know if you can tell, but it's pretty much right where that bar kind of goes in. And then I went up the wing, but underneath the handrail still needs to be done. So I just basically did the top. Okay. But, uh, but yeah, so if y'all want to just go ahead and get that uh, heavy cut and uh, on the other side, your, your port side as well, go ahead, get that all heavy cut. And then I'm going to start with the yellow and uh, yeah, we'll just start running. We'll start running with yellow once you, once you guys are done. Uh, yeah, I think it was stripped, right? Was that screw strip SP? The one right here, that little, little bracket. Uh, I just couldn't get to okay. it. If you can get it out, get it out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we got to buff the underside of that. You might need to switch to a double side though, yeah. if you have a. <clears throat> so, all right, cool. Yeah, let's do that. We'll finish all, get all the heavy cut completed. That way it's just done. And then we'll, we'll all hop to yellow wools. That'd be great. I see y'all got the stackable rigid. Y'all like that? Oh yeah. Works it. nice, huh? So much. Better. I know, I like mine. Big ass bottles we have. Yeah. These yellow wool double sides, anytime you use a double sided wool pad, you have to have a double side wool adapter. We have them in the link down below. Um, we've, we've had plenty of people try, if you put the threads on here, the threads will stick through and the, the, the buffer pad won't actually fit onto the machine. So if you want to buy the double sides, which we do recommend, make sure you get a double side wool adapter. There we go. Now we're ready to go. So right here in this edge along the non-skid, all I'm really doing is I'm letting the weight of the machine polish inside of this edge. I don't really worry about hitting the non-skid. A lot of people tape off the non-skid, but honestly, it's, it's really useless to do that. You can always polish the non-skid, and whenever you're done and you're washing your boat at the end, you can always take a little magic eraser and brush off the non-skid. So don't really take the time to tape off all your non-skid. I see people do that, and it's just a waste of time. Go ahead and put the corner of the pad right in this edge and just let it rip. And while I'm doing this corner right here, I'm also letting the pad hit the edge right here. So you're buffing this lower half and right in the non-skid right here. Yeah, it's nice to detail in the overcast, but unfortunately the sun lets you see into the gel coat. Right. And it always sucks because you'll be buffing it and sun comes out and you see everything like you just did. Yeah. Do you want to, ha I have a headlamp if that'll help you. Yeah, but probably help a bit. Hey, where's that Easton? Easton? Oh, it's right here. Never mind, I got it. Wear this headlamp, see if that'll help you out. Yeah, I do. They'll look in the uh, back seat, pass or uh, driver's side back seat of my truck. I have single and double. You can pull whatever one you want. From an angle, it looks freaking yeah. great. Sure, sun yeah. One of the troubling uh, spots always is going to be the front brow on your front of your boats, especially if it's an overcasty day like today. Um, overcast is nice, but it hides a lot of the glare and the glare is what actually shows you what the, um, 
the, the sunlight actually shows you the imperfections in the gel coat. So you gotta be careful on overcasty days because you'll buff it and it'll look super good. And as soon as that sunlight comes out and you actually see what the surface looks like in the sun, you may see swirls and holograms and even scratches. So be super careful. Having a correction light is gonna help you, but really the best thing that will help you is sunlight. So be a little cautious if you're buffing on an overcast day. And if you do see sanding scratches, that's okay. You just may have to go back over it. And uh, especially on the front brow, the front brow is always the hardest part to get. All right, we're gonna move up to the helm. Here, get this light. Do y'all have another cord up there for that light or no? Uh, no? Okay, I'll get you one. I would just kind of keep it up a little higher. Some of that is real thin up in here. And yeah. Up here was a little tricky. I don't know if it sat in sunlight or not, but it's pretty jacked. That's <laughs> really good. We got cords for days. Here, let's go ahead and clean up the cords just so we don't drive us all bunkers. There we go. These cords bug the heck out of me. All right. Oh, we didn't get cleaner. Dang it. I'll get you some cleaner. We'll clean up behind the seats and then we'll just get to, get to buffing. How do you feel like the Lord's actually helped you in your business so far? Man, definitely. Uh, I mean, he's helped. What hasn't he helped me with is what I think. I mean, I've been in business for five or six months, and uh, I have two full-time employees. I have a ridiculous amount of customers. We have had ridiculous amount of income, especially for me coming, you know, from not a whole lot and nothing whenever I started this business to what I am now. Um, whenever I moved down here in March, you know, I had $200 in the bank account, $6,000 in debt. So uh, that is what I've rebuilt myself from in a very short period of time. And uh, I definitely think he's helped me all the way around. But I turned my life over to him July 16th. And uh, why? it was just one of those feelings. I was in a tough spot. I, I realized, I finally realized after 21 years in July, I'd been living my life, you know, my life, my own way. And um, July 14th, I quit bartending. I quit everything. And uh, I was in church July 16th at Anchor Point in Foley. I definitely, after that, and it hit me, I haven't cried in probably year, you know, eight months. And then, yeah, and then, you know, in church, I completely broke down. And, uh, you know, so that's when I knew God was really talking to me. And after that, we got big into the book. We got big into praying, big into worship. And when I did that and I quit the party and I quit, you know, so many things that I, social media here and there, um, many things I quit. And after I did that, blessings just started falling. And it was one after another. And I mean, even down to my workers, to my customers, to my life, you know, two years ago, come January 14th, I was in a coma. And two years March, January 14th. So that is basically what I've rebuilt myself back up from in two years. Because um, I was down for seven months. Surgery, 
I had a trach in for two months. I couldn't talk for a month and a half. I had a trach in. Yeah, and I couldn't even speak, and that was tough, but, you know, we never, we never let up. We just kept going. For sure. I definitely am thankful, you know, I was able to meet somebody like you and you've helped me out tremendously. Um, I wouldn't know a dang thing about boat detailing if you weren't placed not only in person but online. Yeah. Before I even picked up a buffer, I landed a first boat and what I did was I was able to see his videos and that's how I know how valuable content actually is because I learned boat detailing off his videos. And if I can just speak and change half the amount he does by speaking the word of God or just Christ, so be it. That's, that's what I think I'm gonna yeah. do. Well, dude, thanks for coming out and yes, helping sir. us do this boat. Yeah, man. We're getting wrapped up on the hull, or I'm sorry, in the, uh, in the helm right now. His guys are up there getting it. We boat uh, has came out. Looking good. It's a 1997, you said, right? Yeah, 97 Bayliner. This thing looks like a 2019. <laughs> for sure. This thing looks beautiful. Yeah. So let's go up top. We'll finish up the guys. And it's been a long day, but we're almost finished. It is. And uh, it's been a good day, though. So let's go. Uh, just, um, I don't know, that's a good question. Put them in cup holder or something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Left. Yeah, just put that down there. You can put it in that big husky box. Um, all right, dude, we'll let you guys get out of here. Y'all got a, y'all got a long drive. I appreciate it again. Yeah, man. We'll talk soon. Thank you guys so much. Hey, we all, uh, yes, hey, Jack, or, uh, Cameron, can we say a prayer for the owner? You, you, uh, you had the idea earlier, so I'm gonna let oh, you yeah. lead it. Go for yeah. it. What's his name? Tony. Tony? Yeah. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that Tony has a full recovery for everything he is going through right now. We ask you to repair him, to rebuild him, and give him the courage to be himself again. And I pray that he has many, many memories on this boat. We're cleaning it up, and hopefully he enjoys it. Um, we love you. We thank you. Amen. 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 We Good still, we man. still, we're still getting new on the front. Heck yeah. <laughs> hey, you're, you're, you're grown, man. That's great. Huh? <laughs> that was a great prayer, man. All right, guys, that is it for today. Thank you for watching the video. If you got any value out of today's video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification so that every time we make a video, it will pop up. It was a good day. Ace Mobile Detailing came out. Absolutely killed it. See you guys. We still have a lot to do on this boat. We're going to have to wash it. We have to wax it. And well, uh, today's Friday. We're going to do that on Monday. We're going to go home this weekend and enjoy ourselves. And we'll, we will be back on Monday to finish up. Let's go.